Okay, thank you. You can start. Good afternoon, everybody. So we will speak about newest and experimental clapper in archaeological record. Uh, first, I will uh, introduce really briefly the subject and uh, explain the difficulty in learning of knapping and what feature can be associated to a novice knapper. And after Thomas, we speak about um, the archaeological site. And Thomas, uh, Chantano will finish with discussion and conclusion. Our references was Marta Azzello and David Plerdo. Thanks, please. So um, novice are almost completely absent from our archaeological records due to the belief that they had little contribution to prehistoric records. But the necessity for newer knapper to learn and practice seem obviously in prehistoric context. So normally a lot of what's West lithic material should be belong to novice. We can distinguish two types of novice the adult novice and the children novice. And the distinction between the two are important because the difficulty and feature associated to them present some little differences. Next, please. So to be uh, able to knap, you need to con control some fundamental features that we can see in the right picture. Yeah, the right. All the day. Um, and mastering several skills who can be in two different categories the motor ability, that's the how to do, and the knowledge ability, that's the know how to do. Next, please. The, um, the motor ability corresponds to all the technical gestures the knappers must do, as the trajectory of the gesture, the tip of the gesture associated to each hammer, the precision of the heat, and how to hold the um, raw material. Next, please. The connection, uh, knowledge connection, um, is all the decisions the knapper must take during the reduction sequences, which technique use, where to knap, and to do that, he must understand the interaction between the fundamental parameter to each other and also the interaction of this fundamental parameter with the raw materials and the reduction sequences and of course the interaction between the reduction sequences and the raw materials next please um for children in addition to all these parameters they have to master they are also to deal with other problems because they have differences compared to adults in their motor uh, ability and condition they have shorter attention spans, lack in gesture control, and also a lack in haze hand coordination. That means, um, for example, even if they know where to knap, they don't have the control in their movement to do it. And the shorter attention spans uh, lead them to have more mistakes. Uh, next, please. Because of all these parameters, they need to. Um, to master um, novice knapper make often mistake. And um, some of them are more technical master linked to the fact they don't have a perfectly control of the technical gesture, like the miss hit and a lot of harder mark. As you can see, it's a picture in the right, I think. <laughs> and but also they have they make a lot of um step and heat termination as you can see we can see a heat termination of the flag in the left picture yeah thank you Denishta. <laughs> but um the flags they create have also a low uh length breadth ratio and they are inconsistent in their production as well as the form the flag presents like the the flag have often irregularity form um, they also have mistakes who can be more associated to the cognitive ability because uh, they have difficulty to originate the, um, the raw material, they present irregularity form, and they um, usually have wasteful and inefficient use of the raw material because they can think very well where to knap, how to knap. Next, please. Um, 
lot of technical features uh, are, are similar to adults and, and children because they don't master the um, motor ability, but the cognitive features change a bit. Because of the lack of control in motor ability and uh, they can't hold the raw material properly, so it's more easy for them to use uh, bipolar percussion as a novel. So that really associated to children napping. And um, sorry, and for them it's more easy to uh, do a two-dimension flaking. That means they will pre-select the flake with the um, similar morphology of the tools they want to make and just try to shape a bit more the morphology, the shape of the flag the, um, of the tools they want to, to do. So now Thomas will speak about the archaeological record. Okay, thank you Lila. Uh, good afternoon to <coughs> everybody. So I will try to do a brief review of some sites that do different approach uh, in the methodology for trying to identify the snappers, uh, the novice snappers in some archaeological record. Uh, so um, through the history of the archaeological research, it has been common that during the interpretation of any archaeological site, the material recovered are assumed as a product of an economic context. Nevertheless, since the 80s and the 90s, there has been a series of archaeological investigations that support uh, with ethnographic works and also with different types of lithic analysis that have shown the possible bias in, the, in, the, in this interpretation of the material culture. Uh, so, so to amplify what we have point, uh, I'm going to present you, well, yeah, very briefly, next, uh, okay, Trolls Gave. The first one is the site named Trolls Gave, work by Fisher during the 80s and, uh, and 70s. This work is an important because this is one of the first researchers uh, that record the presence of novice snapper during the excavation of a site. Uh, the site was interpreted as a domestic area with the presence of two bonfires in, uh, and in the surrounding area he found an important number of laminar debitage. Fisher realized that while in the main bonfire uh, were a group of high frequency of well-done bladeless. In the second bonfire was surrendered uh, by not well-worked bladeless. Also notice that in the surrounding area of this second bonfire, the course presents some mistakes that don't allow to uh, do proper knapping. Also, uh, to understand the distribution and the range uh, that can occur during a knapping session, Fisher do a controlled uh, knapping experiment and he made a complete laminar reproduction sequence emulating the conditions uh, identified in the site during the excavation. He realized, according to, the ex to these experiments, uh, also the spatial analysis and the technological analysis origin um, uh, that create these two, two clusters, uh, he observed that at least there should be three different persons with three different uh, skill levels uh, for napping. Uh, next one, Tanisha. Thanks. Uh, the second one, uh, based on the identification of certain difference within the lithic assemblage recovered from two sites in central Alaska, Gomez and collaborators intend to identify their origin by investigating uh, apprentice knappers. For that, they carry out two types of analysis for both sites, a spatial and technological analysis that would allow them to identify in some of these pro if some of these products uh, were made by novice hands. The first site is uh, Swan Point, uh, um, particularly the occupation C, Sira 4B, interpreted as a single occupation event uh, that Fisher said uh, it should be done in days or weeks, and it's dated around 14,000 years ago, BP. The, analyze, uh, the, analy the, ana the analysis uh, was done over 12 microlaminar cores and the respective uh, refitting. The result shows that the, the identification of various skill levels uh, mainly, seven cores were totally exhausted, uh, evidencing a complete mastery of the technique, while uh, other five uh, cores uh, evidence some uh, mistakes, some errors, uh, that according to the authors can be interpreted as apprentice and novice errors. Also, the spatial analysis for this uh, site uh, with the two lithic clusters run, uh, well, in the analyst, in, in this anal in the spatial analysis, the author identified two lithic clusters surrounding two bonfires. The skill apprentice cores were differentiately located around one of the bonfire 
Meanwhile, the performed corns and less skilled ones were scattered around the second bonfire. It means that there were a special segregation for these uh, not novi no novice uh, knappers. The second site is Little Pingue Creek. It's an archaeological context that is characterized uh, by having a very varied lithic toolkit of which the technological production of microblades micro uh, stand out. Unlike the first site, uh, Penguin Creek presents just two levels on the records, uh, two levels of skin of, of napping, of skill napping, sorry, expert and a novice beginner. Mainly, the presence of novice nappers is clearly evidenced by the record of at least two non productive uh, flake cores, which show multiple incipient cord over wrong napping surface and no formating on the core for uh, good work over it. So regarding the spatial analysis, uh, just last, uh, just as in South Point, the production of the expert knapper is centered, is concentrated around the heat, the heat, uh, while the evidence of the novice knappers is relegated to the periphery. Uh, the other example, Tanisha, please. So the ethnographic work have shown that in some cases, the artifact of an archeological record are not always a direct product of an utilitarian uh, system. This work became an important tool for the study of hunter-gatherers archaeological in context of South America, especially in the Pampian region of Argentina. These ethnographies suggest uh, new ways of understanding a very atypical part of the archaeological assemblage of some sites that present high frequency and according to the functional uh, analysis of these uh, atypical pieces, uh, not present much uh, functionality because of their morphologies. For example, we have the site Arroyo Seco II, a site that is interpreted as a domestic and burial area, politics recover the presence of one atypical boleadora or bowler that is poorly made uh, with, that, with a size below the, norm, below, yeah, below the normal average, uh, made on a very bad raw material, and it is associated with a kid uh, burial. The interpretation of politics is that this element should be a funerary uh, trousseau or, uh, or yeah, like a, a toy kit. Uh, in the other hand, we have the example of projectile points uh, now that fishtail in the side Cerro El Sombrero Cima, in the sector of a mountain range in Tangilia, uh, also Argentina. The site has been interpreted by Flenkenheimer as uh, a lithic workshop of projectile points. Within the collection of projectile points, a large number of small and not well done projectile points stand out. Uh, Flenkenheimer has done technological and experimental analysis over this projectile point, and she has found that they do not have any functionality because of their uh, aerodynamics, uh, the weight, also the sharpness of the distal part. The next example. Uh, <clears throat> the last research consulted for this uh, paper was the ethnographic review and lithic analysis done by Doe regarding the arrowheads of the plains of Northwest North America, and particularly on uh, the arrowheads find in the site Head smash in Buffalo, that is located in Alberta, Canada. Though we start explaining that in several sites of this area which have recorded uh, arrowheads, there is an unusual important portion of the collection that shows a very tiny size and not well manufactured arrowhead. For example, for, for explaining this presence uh, of these uh, tiny arrowheads, he started doing a vast ethnographic review looking for the origin of these arrowheads and finding that several ethnographers observed that the manufacture of the arrowhead is a very precisely operation for the Native American. Uh, also, he found that the entire process of archery uh, from, the, from, from creating the own uh, bow, arrow, and of course the arrowheads and learn how to shoot, is a teaching, uh, it's teaching to the kids in very, very early ages. After that, Doe carries out a morphological study of the arrowheads found in this site, finding that the difference of size, weight, uh, even the technique of manufacture of these arrowheads uh, don't allow them to have uh, any functionality uh, with hunting activities. Uh, this ethnographic review and morphological analysis of the points allows to the author uh, suggests that the explanation of these small arrows can be product of the playful activities of children during the learning of process of napping and mainly uh, during uh, the learning of the archery. So as uh, we have shown you, there is a great variety of archeological study that address the identification of novice nappers from different perspectives based on different studies. 
eh, as technological and technical lithic analysis, eh, lithic experimental analysis, spatial analysis, and also eh, ethnographic eh, record. So uh, this, this creates a huge uh, debate, discussion uh, around this, this topic, and uh, Shantanu will uh, uh, introduce you uh, about it. Uh, hello. 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 Uh, hello. Uh, please bear with me. The discussion challenges will be a little long. So next slide, please. So uh, the first of all, we'll talk about, in general, talk about the attributes of novice mapping in archaeological context which like my colleagues have already talked about so what we can i will talk about is, uh, of some observations which we which 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 are common in the uh, the sites such as the uh, whole reduction sequence was uh, in highly preserved site the whole reduction sequence was present of novice nappers while in the case of expert nappers the final uh, the final product was probably uh, was removed probably used uh, probably uh, used for some other purposes so uh, which tells us that uh, the this lithic cluster which we have regarded as of uh, novice napper is used uh, is made basically for practice or play uh, and then uh, some more observations which were, which were made, which are very common are the evidence of only use of hard hammer in case of novice napper material reutilization of used cores usage of low quality raw material and and also the spatial orientation of different uh, individual nappers regarding uh, which we can tell from the spatial an uh, an analysis where what this tells us or what is it interpreted as is that items of importance like good raw material or soft hammer were reserved for adults only uh, in in the sites uh, like in the sites or in the cases where the raw material was very scarce so this might have been used to give lower quality raw material to novice nappers to for practice Next, please. So now we will talk about why adding novice nappers into prehistory is important. I mean, analyzing them is very important. First of all, is that the perception of how we look and interpret lithic assemblages to, uh, changes totally. Like one uh, good example of it is at Sovio, where the site is first interpreted as hunting camp comprising of all male group until the evidence of novice nappers were as analyzed and the interpretation changed to a hunting cap of uh, consisting of men, women, children carrying out routine activities. Uh, just uh, more than that, uh, this notion of separating individuals uh, in lithic assemblages helps us to bet uh, theoretically helps us better to understand the intra intersite variability in lithics, the stylistic uh, expressions of different uh, individual nappers in, in, a, in a site better understanding of the process of technological variation over time and especially the interaction of individuals in a uh, prehistoric hunter gatherer society. Another thing regarding novice nappers is that it gives insights into the learning processes which might have been in play uh, for the transfer of knowledge. As you know, the, uh, the cultural evolution of humans is based upon transmission of knowledge through high fidelity, <clears throat> high fidelity, high fidelity processes such as uh, such as a teaching or imitation in which we can pass on the information through generations uh, through generations which is uh, which we do not see in our closest relatives like great apes which still are dependent upon uh, low fidelity uh, tra uh, transmission of knowledge um, uh, examples such as stimulus enhancement or uh, emulation just uh, product copying so next slide please so like uh, most of the studies have uh, through spatial analysis and refitting analysis have uh, explored the concept of apprenticeship or teaching or learning. So at uh, Pensavon, I hope I'm right. At one location, it was seen that uh, the one lithic cluster was made picture perfectly, but and even the uh, uh, what the end product was also available uh, in in the lithic cluster and like every step was followed with precision and so it was interpreted as like somebody was teaching uh, 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 others how to make how to make uh, the, how to follow that reduction sequence other side of Sovio, the author has noted that the errors made by novice nappers on low quality raw material of course was corrected by skill nappers so the other interpretation is of the concept of play like uh, individual practices which people do or uh, in in this case novice do or as author says uh, authors 
say children do which uh, and one great example of it which we have photographs of on the right side is that neolithic hand axe which is from uh, malmo sweden and as you can see the uh, the second picture the hand axe uh, has the similar shape uh, the uh, as the proper hand uh, proper neolithic hand axe but it does not follow any technological uh, uh, parameters which it should have so it was just maybe uh, uh, what the author has interpreted as is a child trying to nap trying to just see what the other uh, the adult is doing and trying to uh, nap accordingly next slide please so next thing we'll talk about is challenges first of all these most of this uh, analysis has been done in uh, has, uh, the evidence of novice napper has been found in like sites which are in primary context and are like uh, very uh, in very uh, highly preserved and uh, second of all uh, most of the sites are after upper paleolithic which uh, which is because the there the uh, chain operator or the reduction sequences are more complex we can study more i mean there are more chances of making mistakes so in uh, in case of uh, what uh, the challenges is that in case of low grade preservation of sites separating individual works in artifact assemblage uh, on the basis of skill alone is not possible because uh, the skill progression or learning a uh, napping sequence is not linear it's non uh, linear in nature and uh, even uh, in sites which have separate lithic clusters and everything is well preserved the we have no way of telling that the like uh, the lithic clusters of uh, which of different skill level were made by the same napper or different nappers or the same napper on different days while he is learning because uh, the how we date right now uh, the, we date sites right now is not that precise we cannot tell the difference between a month a day uh, a, a month a year or some years and uh, now moving on other challenges are like if there is, there is a scarcity of raw material so some other some uh, specific uh, teaching methods must have uh, must have been applied like one uh, author ferguson uh, especially has talked about a uh, concept of embedded learning in which the the novice nappers are integrated into the napping napping program slowly one step at a time like giving them some giving them uh, some uh, some initial part of reduction sequences to follow so that they can first learn that and then move on one step at a time and this way they can conserve the raw material on the right you can see uh, these this is the exp uh, the experiment which he carried out in uh, for uh, embedded learning in the first picture you see these are the these are the projectile points he made in the second picture you see these this is uh, an example of a napper which was taught only by uh, vi uh, visual and verbal instructions and the third one you see is the person uh, is a novice napper which was taught by the concept of embedded learning a specific uh, uh, in this a specific learning so this uh, process might have been used and the problem is that when this if this process has been used the uh, initial markers of like the mistakes of novice nappers are not present so uh, more challenges so uh, some uh, usually Usually, noise snapping products and sites have been identified in comparison to products made by ex ex experts, like uh, experts. Yeah, so this differentiation does not work for simple core and flake technologies uh, or expedient technologies where the complexity of chain of repair is relatively simple and the production of informal tool types dominate. One, one of the last uh, challenges is specifically regarding uh, child napping is that uh, with the help of ethnographical examples, uh, authors, uh, authors of archaeologists have tried to speculate that the material of uh, the lithic material of novice napper, uh, novice napper, specifically child napper, should be smaller in size because the size of the hands are very small. But this comes uh, with its own uh, problems as the miniaturization of tools can be due to raw material constraints, transport, uh, transport efficiency stylistic expression or maybe because of hafting so <clears throat> to conclude or to uh, to say next slide please like what more uh, experimental work which we need to do is that uh, first of all we should try to quantify the error types which experts make 
and second in the long term napping studies uh, specifically involving children not adults adults uh, as subjects is needed uh, children i mean teenagers or uh, maybe uh, 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 starting from 8 years old um, of onwards to explore different uh, and explore different teaching methods with them so that's the conclusion thank you Thank you very much.